Peep the retro shirt, huh? Feeling good, look. Ooh, feeling good? Oh, look at that, boom, Space Jam. All right, all right. So, I'd like to thank everybody for taking the time out of their day to join this live chat and video because it will be the last one showcasing all of these aquariums. So as you see these aquariums and this dismantled home, this will be the last time we see these aquariums in the state that they're in. I'm not getting rid of any livestock. Can you hear me, David Kim? Can you hear me? Come on, buddy. What's up? So I smashed that like button. So all the livestock will stay. I'll kind of go over my ideas, my thoughts for a lot of these aquariums. And then, um, yeah, we can, can ask questions about them, kind of get an idea of what we're doing and go from there. I was actually checking out this little ditty here, a huh? little catalog. I went to the ACA, was it last week? No, the weekend before last. And it was okay. You know, it was fresh off of crap, right? And it wasn't bad. I got to see some really cool stores. I did a video on a store up there. It was really nice. Uh, David Kim is apologizing for not watching videos. That's okay, man. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take you, we're gonna start with the vivariums. I'm gonna talk a little bit about what's happening with them. And then we'll work our way back into this room where we'll go over the Trophius tank, the Congo tank, and the saltwater tank if it's any excitement to you. But this is truly the last video that all of my aquariums currently in their state will be in. So let's, uh, let's head that way and we can do a little chit chat because I think it's better. And it's beautiful, isn't it? Look at, I'm setting up, I'm getting ready to do a really cool video and the house is in disarray because I mean, that's what happens when you're moving, right? So the last video where all of my stuff will be showcased, but we're gonna look, oh, there's actually some dart frogs here. Peep this action. Here we go. Let's see if they, if they stay, ooh, he did not. He ran like a little baby. Oh, you can see him back there. Hopping around. Oh, 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 oh. There's one. Ooh-wee. I don't know. Can you see him? But this is, this is the first vivarium that I've ever done. This is the one that got me like hooked on vivariums and it's pretty crazy to think that it, I've cut this thing, you know, a few times, but you can see all the little buggies in there. Wait a minute. Do I got a frog underneath that? No, but this is, this is the idea of this is I want to go taller. I just think I'm getting restricted in my height. Um, YouTube just sent that you were live at 604. Eh, that's okay. But the idea is I want this to go taller. Got my, my Serpa design inspiration. So this is an 18 by 18 by 24. And I would like, or excuse me, 18 by 18 by 18. And I would like this to go to 18 by 18 by 24. It would just be much taller. And that's okay. Um, I can redo most of this stuff and then convert it over and we'll discuss that as you know we kind of move, move along here. So this is the second one that I set up. Let me crank this open. These guys are, ah, whoop, it just sound, I, the sound of this one is crazy. But, oh, there's one. Do you see him? Boom, there he is. Oh, he disappeared. <laughs> there he is. Come on, guy, come into focus. Get these leaves out of the way. Yeah, there he is. So what's cool about this one is I escaped it for specific 
uh, dart frogs, and I've actually got some tree frogs living in here as well. And it's temporary until I break it down and set it up. But again, I'd like to go 24 tall with this. And the reason being is, well, I just think it would look better if it was taller. But all the plants are doing really well. I've only clipped here a couple of times, which was this runner. I'm not really good with plants in terms of names. So I apologize, but this is what I'm talking about. I just love the lush vivariums that you can create. I'm trying to, I'm hoping we can see. Let me see if I can find one of the, the tree frogs and then we'll move along. No, I can't. We got some dying leaf back there, but I just love this bioactive ecosystem. All these plants are real. 100% real. Matter of fact, new growth, new growth. And then I bring you to, not him. <laughs> get out of the way, dude. Come on, Mando. Get out of the way, boy. Come on, man. So, sorry. This one is a vision cage where I was working on growing some plants and taking care of you know, some animals if I was finding the animals that I absolutely loved but I haven't. Let me get you to the other side so there's no glare. Mando loves the vivariums, but this one's just, like I said, it's housing a lot of the plants to make sure that they are ready for the new paludarium and the new vivariums. Shoop. Ah, so that's it in a nutshell. We are legit going to be upgrading this to a 24 tall. Um, just the height would be better. I'm going to get rid of this and I'm going to build a new one. And I'm hoping that it turns out okay. Uh, who knows? And then this one would also go to a 24. Just because I believe the height is so much better. It just really is better. So thank you everyone that has just finally joined. This is the last rundown of all the aquariums that we have running here. Here, look at this one. Look at that, beauty. So that is, uh, we have this beta left and um, one more beta left that will probably make the pilgrimage to the new home. So, does anybody, if you're good in here, that's pretty much it. 24 inches tall, 24 inches tall. Using that as a hold right now. And now we're gonna go see the man. Could be a female, I don't know. The myth, the legend, slash. So Liam's room's probably the only nice room still put together. <laughs> Amanda wants to go outside. But here's Slash. Slash is doing phenomenal as normal. He is looking mighty fantastic. Let's see if we can get Slash to come on camera here. So listen to him. Slash is an amazing Diamondback Terrapin. Listen, he is so cool. I love his ridges. I don't even know what you call them, but overall his health is fantastic. And he is a hoot to get to learn about fundamentally. Look at him. Boo! But this tank is actually going away. So this tank is gone. It's gonna go to a friend and he's gonna set it up specifically for his needs. And Slash will be getting an update as well. So this is 36 by 22 by 22. Look at him. And he's gonna get a much bigger enclosure. The aquarium will go, but Slash will get a much bigger enclosure. He'll get a temporary big enclosure, and then he'll also Oh my goodness, I'm so sorry. I don't know if it's back. I think it's back, but yes, it is. My boss just called smack dab in the middle, so I apologize. Look at him, what is he doing? Again, I'm not getting rid of any of the animals. I am only 
getting rid of the enclosures to go to bigger enclosures. Look at Slash, he is crazy. So this 36, 22, 22, I'm gonna upgrade him to the Congo Aquarium and that's where we'll go with that because it won't make sense right now. So gone, keeping Slash, of course. And then, I apologize for that, received a phone call right in the smack dab middle. You know, these, these bosses, they just have no respect. No respect, put some respect on my name. <laughs> so let me show you um, this so that it, you, it makes sense to you. So this is 48 by 30, I believe, by 36 tall. And the idea for this is there's gonna be dart frogs, there's gonna be land, and at the bottom is around 100 gallons or so. That's gonna be where the Congo Aquarium goes. So I'll have all my Congo Tetras, the Buffalo Head Cichlids, and Dwight the Puffer all below here. So that Congo tank will go here and uh, Slash will go into the new tank, if that makes sense. So there's a lot, there's a lot that is happening. I mean, a lot. And it's kind of crazy to think that this is all happening rather quickly, even though we've been talking about it for a long time. Let me show you this real quick. I have been working on a snail hatchery. So I've got a bunch of snails in there now for old Dwight. Um, I do have some, somebody said, do I have extra lights? I do have extra lights. Um, I'd have to see once I move what I do and, you know, don't have. But we've got... This tank right here that's moving quickly, it's got the uh, zebra plecos in it. Whoop. And then this is a scape tank that was done a while ago. And this houses um, a beta, but I don't know where he went. <laughs> he, he's changed colors, we've had him a long time, but this has got the uh, white cloud minnows and the ember tetras, and it did have I don't know where it's at. Eh, he's in there somewhere. I just saw him earlier today, unless that was the last time I was gonna see him. He likes to snuggle inside the subwasser tang. Okay, so the only other one you haven't seen outside of the office is the shrimp tank. So I guess that would be the next piece. Uh, Josh Cunningham, what's up my brother? I will also be at Aquashella Chicago, uh, what is it, the 14th and 15th or whatever it is. But here's the shrimp tank in all its glory. So there's lots of shrimp in here. I mean, almost too much. Um, it's insane the amount of shrimp that you will find floundering around, grabbing food, some really nice ones. Here we go. I don't know if you can see them like, oh, there you go. Beauties, 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 beauties. So that was what Liam's tank was. I'm not sure what we're gonna do with that one. That's one of those, I don't know. That's one of those things where I'm not sure how we're gonna handle that. I was filming a video for Seachem, Save for Prime, and which one is better. So let's chat for a second. I am pretending like I am not panicking. I'm packing up the stuff here. I've got the whole room is being packed up. The salt tank. I've got the Tanganyika tank. After I get done live, we're gonna take that down. And there's the Congo tank. So we're gonna go over all that in a moment. Somebody asked how big terrapins get. Females can get about 12 inches, males roughly about six inches, um, maybe seven inches. But right now he's not, he or she's not very big. But what I wanted to say is 
I'm always the person to say prior planning prevents poor performance. And you've got a plan, you've got a plan, you've got a plan. And that's what I'm doing. I, I'm planning to keep these fish and I'll kind of sit here because this is, this tank is going to be a tough one to, to chat about. Let me turn off some lights here. The reason why I say it's going to be a tough one to chat about is because it's just escaped extremely nicely. And it's, I'm not like, Ooh, I'm so cool. Cause I did that. It's, it just happened. And these trophies are getting bigger. I really haven't done any maintenance to this aquarium. I've got a baby uh, Eremotus. There he, there he is. Oh, he tucked himself away. You can see him kind of come out of there. But they're, everybody's looking so phenomenal uh, in their health. My, my catfish are doing well. And if you watch videos way back um, when I first started YouTube, <laughs> those guys are on there and they are looking amazing. So I'm keeping the trophies. The Dart and I, I'm going to have to figure out. I've only got three. I've got two and a baby. But they're just, my goodness, he is. I don't even, the, is Cunningham watching? Because, or even Craigers. Does that look like a Morago? It looks like he has way too much coloration to be a Morago. I don't know. I mean, he looks good. But anyways, I... This tank is going away. The, again, the fish are not going away, but this aquarium is going away. And the reason being is because the new room is going to have all of the same style aquariums, which I will be announcing at some point of what I decided to do and, and all that happy stuff. But this aquarium is... Yeah, he... <laughs> He colored up just for the, just for the live video. I mean, even the Dart and I, look at him. Even the Dart and I is colored up. Here, I'll give you a close-up shot of these guys. They, they love picking off the rocks. And the aquarium size that I'm doing, look at the Eremotus. Oh, such a derp gang. Look at them. Boom, those blue specks. Everybody is looking super good. Dude, everybody's got this yellow ridge. I mean, they're looking fantastic. I'm not saying that because we're live. I mean, they did not look like this. Oh, 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 there he is. See him in the back? But yeah, I mean, this is insane. His colors are phenomenal. Holy cow. Um, it's, it'll be cool to see how they grow up. But the neat part about this tank is it's staying the same. It's just going to be a new footprint. So this is 72, 22, 22. They're going to be in a 72, 24, 30. <laughs> yeah. So I'll be able to go much higher with the rocks. It'll look really sweet. I'm going to keep um, all of the real rocks that I have that are not glued, but these are going to stay with the aquarium. And then I'm going to rescape the new tank. And I'm thinking about these trophies and then Petrochromis Travasse. Possibly. I'm not sure yet. Man, even this one's colors, like it's just slightly different. Look at that. Unreal what's happening live. I mean, they all kind of looked derp. Like, I mean, that one still looks really good, but I mean, he is ridiculous. <laughs> I'm, I, I don't want to talk about it too much, but this tank is very, very relaxing. I've tried just about everything I could possibly do. It does really well. Um, even this guy's looking phenomenal, which they normally don't. They look like sardines. So everybody must be enjoying the, the live. <laughs> but I, I don't, it, it's, it's just, let's just give it a moment of, just one moment of this tank in a panoramic shot as its, uh, as its last go. Man, but whenever we break something down, we always, always build it better. We, we always build it better. That's, that's guaranteed. 
Um, almost want to give up my Severum. No, don't give up your Severums. I know he does. He looks more like a Kasanga than he does anything else. I guess time will tell. It's the speckles on the front is what throws me off. But these were supposed to be Miragos. But look at him. He does. He looks like a. He looks like a. Maybe it's a cross. I, I don't know. It's not supposed to be a cross. That's not. I don't know. I would. Matter of fact, I got my favorite book. So if anybody remembers, I'll give you this, I'll give you this angle of the aquarium while I'm grabbing the book. But if anybody remembers, I used to read the odd book, Odd Konings' uh, Tanganyika book. And I didn't have it anymore for random reasons. And I was able to pick it up at the ACA, which was really awesome. But let me look at Trophius. Oh, look at that. I pulled right up to... I pulled right up to him. We're about to find out what's popping with this fish. So, man, it's kind of hard to tell. I don't know. I mean, that's a Morago with a dark, dark picture. I see the resemblance in the face, but I don't see the resemblance anywhere else. Let me see if I could... This is why I like having the book, you know, you, I mean, he almost, I don't know, man. I mean, I'm looking through right now. His anal fins ha has that, has that pink. It's almost like that guy right there in person, but then it also resembles that guy. So I don't know, time will tell, but they were supposed to be Miragos and I, Still thought that they were Moragos based on the, the dorsal fin ridge that has some yellow on it. That's, that's a Morago trait, but who knows? Who knows with fish nowadays? I mean, yeah, look, I mean, this is, I mean, it's definitely a Morai of some sort. But yeah, that's how I learn. I read books. Who would have thought? <laughs> so... Uh, before I move on to some other aquariums, does anybody have any questions um, about what is, what is happening? Remember, this channel's full transparency. And i uh, sorry, I was just looking through the book. I always get sidetracked. But yeah, this channel's full transparency. I always talk about what's happening, what I'm doing. We were just over the house today. Everything looked really good. except they had doors on the wrong way. And I mean, overall, I'm excited. But it's gonna be a real busy couple of weeks. I've got this week to help pack. I believe it's next Wednesday. I'm on a plane to Chicago. So if you're anywhere near Chicago, Schaumburg to be exact, I'm gonna be there. I'd love to see you. There's gonna be lots of YouTubers there and it'll be fun. And then I come home that following Wednesday, so a full week out there, and then it's like 10 days till we move. They say they're on track to the end of the month. I've got no option, it has to be the end of the month. So I'm gonna pack up some more stuff tonight. Wendy and I are gonna play Borderlands 3. <laughs> and um, yeah, I mean, I, I'm very excited. It's gonna be a lot of work, but I have been, I mean, this is just gonna be awesome. The house is beautiful and I don't think I've ever built anything as beautiful as this home. And I couldn't have done it without somebody that was giving 110% into it, right? Like they were putting just as much effort into it as myself financially, support wise, like taking the reins on a lot of stuff, getting things done. People, you don't realize when you have a solid team, whether it's a relationship, a sports team, a work team, whatever it is, that's a huge, huge stress off of you. I mean, a lot, but enough of that. Where's my orange filter? I'm going to talk briefly because I know a lot of you folks aren't necessarily in to saltwater aquariums. And again, 
This is a mess over here, so bear with me. But this is a hold tank. Thank you very much, Johnny Moore. I greatly appreciate it. What I mean by hold tank, look at that, ooh, is sold the other tank, person picked it up, and now I've got this hot rod holding me over. It's basically housing my coral, um, as so is my local fish store. But what's crazy is, I mean, look at that. Everything's doing well. I mean, this is run off of a canister filter. And if you don't believe me, it's right there. There's nothing else running this. I've got some, some wave pumps in there, but everything looks healthy. Um, these knuckleheads keep booping the Zoas. And I mean, look at that pink Ghani. Look at that. Ooh, mama. But yeah, really cool. Just to see how everything's working out in here. I mean, even you can't see it, but that's my first piece of coral back there. Uh, right here. It's called the Wilsoni. Um, it's, it's amazing. And then I've got, look at that rainbow a can. Woo -wee. All the mushrooms. So everything looks good in this tank. I mean, it really does. It's running a Kessel AP9X and some Reef Brights, but overall, oh, just unreal, unreal. When I take that off, doesn't look as good, but this cool little thing here, watch this. Kerpow, now we can get a nice little, nice little view. Look at all of its feeder tentacles are out. Hoo-wee. You guys are seeing this real time, baby. This stuff ain't hard. Everybody makes it seem so hard. It's not hard. It, no, it really isn't. And traveling too, it's, it's not hard at all. Uh, but that aquarium is going to be here. Babe, when did, when did it say it was going to be here in like four days? I don't know. Maybe she'll answer. I don't do water changes. <laughs> um, I top off. Don't do what I do. I've been testing the limits of what this, what this aquarium is capable of. Like, I, I really am. I'm testing its limits. And the limits have, have done okay with me. But once you get stuff dialed in, folks, stop playing with things. You see somebody else do something, you're like, oh, yeah, man. You know what I got to do? I got to. I got a little dude, a little tinker in, in there. This guy on the tube of you said tinker. If I do a little tinker, add my little GH and my KH and my calcium mag. we will fire it up. That's where we blow everything. Whether it's fresh water, whether it's salt water, whether it's reptiles. It's the moment we decide to change things abundantly. You ever been on a diet for like six months or you, you decided to get better for a few months and then you go back one time to your old ways and you're like, oh God. It's the same thing. Uh, so typically I would run a skimmer on something bigger than this. I had a uh, nano skimmer that I was testing out, but it was taking up a lot of room and causing a lot of micro bubbles in there. And so what I do is I just, I agitate the surface and I don't feed a ton cause I don't feed the corals a lot uh, as of yet. It's mainly the fish. And so the, the corals will get whatever's left over. So really it's just the canister. It's a whale 500 powering it. You can't even hear it. And the two flow pumps inside, that's it. I got a heater cause salt water's finicky with temp. No heater, no heater over here. Uh, Slash has a heater, but it's, it's, it's insane. So I'm gonna show you the Congo tank. I want you to think of some crazy questions. I don't care what they are. Um, and then I'll tell you the next video, it's gonna come out Sunday. We'll actually talk about it right now. It is on Prime versus Safe. Which one is better and which one you should use in the right circumstances? And then also if you're into like retro t-shirts and things like that, I'm telling you, you're gonna see a lot of these retro things happening in these videos uh, with a lot of Easter eggs, especially with the new build. And you know, I, I can't thank the sponsor so far enough, Carib Sea, Aquarium Fish Depot. I mean, Kessel, 
it's crazy. Like Reef Bright, I, it's, it's insane. But enough of that. Let's go look at this aquarium because I'm gonna shut these so that we can get a nice capture of this. So this aquarium is not going away. But they're going to go into that paludarium we talked about. I mean, look at how ridiculous. Come on. Look at that. Oh, what's up, Dwight? Eh, hey, Doc. I mean, look at that. Look at them all. They're all out. Look at Papa Dukes. Pop Dukes is there. We got Dwight, the Shrudent Eye. All of the um, Congo Tetras, clearly most of them are males. Aquarium Fish Depot. Look at those. <gasps> I love this tank. Now I'm going to be honest. I'm going to be flat out with you. I haven't done a water change on this tank but one time in one year. And I don't believe it's because of the plants because there's not a lot of them in there. What I believe it has to do is a balanced system. I do clean the filtration. It's two whale 500s. I don't overfeed, and I just kind of lately have let it run wherever it wants to go. And so you can see there's a lot of algae on the back, which is probably absorbing. And if I get closer, you can see a lot of the hair algae uh, happening. This is all me testing the limits because these aquariums are going to be in that new room, and I want to see how far I can push my parameters by testing, watching, um, checking spawning behaviors. I mean, these guys are still spawning. Look at how beautiful he is. Ugh, I love that fish. He is a rock star. I'm gonna call, call him rock steady, man. He is just all in. Now there was, this is, I'm gonna, I'll just, since we're like 30 minutes in, it's gonna be a lot for people to go and see this, but. See his gill issue right here on that Congo Tetra? Hopefully he turns around and watch this. See that gill issue? Dead center, boom. I put that Tetra, I've been thinking this guy's been dying for like six months. He just swims really weird. But there's only like two female, but he was about that size. Three months ago, four months ago, whenever I received that shipment, I put him in with Dwight thinking, or excuse me, I put him in with Slash thinking Slash would eat him and enjoy some live food. There was nothing wrong with the fish other than the gill issue. And Slash decided he was getting along with him. So I ended up pulling him out and putting him back in here because I wasn't breeding. And if I was, I would call anyways. And it turns out he is a massive male. Uh, there is another massive wild caught male back there. Oh! <laughs> Did you see him come out? He was like, try me. Um, I don't know. I don't see. Oh, we got some babies. We got some babies. Hello. It's just, it's just amazing to see this. It, it, I just let it go natural. And I mean, look at it. I got the floating deal in there. I just think it came out really well. The one thing I am concerned about is I did, and I know he's still in here, but I, I do, I shouldn't say I did. I do have a Shrudeni um, catfish, but you never see him. And when you see him, it's a very special treat. Oh, look at Dwight. <laughs> Hello, Dwight. Yes, child, everyone wants to see you. I mean, he is a camera hog. Beautiful fish, beautiful fish. Just crazy beautiful fish. Man, those reef brights are crushing it. All right, so let's ask, uh, let's ask some questions. I'll answer them and then we can kind of uh, figure out what the next steps are. I'm gonna lower this uh, little ditty here. But when I say that they're sponsoring, I'm not taking, I am taking product, 
but I'm not taking any money. I'm not a fan of uh, taking money from anyone, honestly. It's very, very hard for me to do that. And it's one of those things where full transparency, I've never really, I mean, I think one of my biggest videos is over a million. Victoria Lee, we will be in Chicago, Schomburg. I, um, I didn't even monetize that video in the beginning. And then I monetized and I decided that I was putting a lot of work and a lot of effort into it. And it was tough. And so here I am now doing what it is that like, like I'm like, you don't, you don't realize I'm super passionate. You know, when you see videos 10 years ago, I'm freaking crazy. I'm all over the place. Um, <laughs> Tom, thanks. Th these aren't even the full length list of what I have. They're, most of them are all boxed up. I got a huge haul. I got a brand new uh, party wagon. Dwight looks like my ex. <laughs> um, so I'm in a place where I'm like extremely positive again. I'm forward thinking. I'm excited. I'm doing what it is I love. I'm not chasing after anything. Uh, speaking of which, I got a brand new camera. And uh, if anybody's looking to start YouTube, I have a Sony ZV-1 uh, with wide angle macro lens and some other little accessories with a small rig on it. If you're interested um, on Instagram or Facebook, I'll end up selling this in a Sony group, but it's, it's practically brand new. I've got four total batteries, all that jazz, the whole nine yards. I just, uh, just upgraded, got lots of new gear to play with. And I'm very excited. I will not be breeding in the new room. If it happens, it happens, but it's not something that I'm going to be actively um, seeking. It's just like this tank. I wasn't actively seeking it. It just happened. Um, let's see. I'm just looking over some questions. Somebody said I sounded like a NASCAR driver. So how many water changes do you do? Um, so total, I do more water changes on this than anything. So I definitely have to get a water change on one more time. I'll probably do it at the end of the week, but I typically run, I don't know, water changes every, every few months on this one, salt tank, same thing, Congo tank, very rarely. And then Dwight, uh, I mean, slash, why do I keep getting them mixed up? Slash I do a little bit more. So probably once a month. I like spending more time looking at my aquariums than I do maintenancing my aquariums. It's just something that's ingrained in my brain. Like I don't want to tinker. I want to view. If I'm going to be tinkering, it's me moving a rock. It's not me doing a water change and sifting sand, right? Like I'm, I'm thoroughly thinking most of this out, but I am going to saw those. They're okay. What, who's, what, is, what is this guy talking about? Saw what? What did you see? I don't know what's happening because I'm on my phone today. And you got to check out the Ninja Turtle Power. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The Power Ranger collab. <laughs> actually, it, I, it, I could lose 100. Actually, there's probably not even 100 people in here. But I can lose half of who's watching. But I'm going to show you one of the most epic finds, collectible-wise, for me that I found. Hold on. What I'm about to show you is very intense. If you grew up in the 80s, like I did, I was born in 83, I have an original class nine ectoplasm. However, actually still fresh. <laughs> Smells like childhood in there. How awesome is that? This is like Bitcoin with the amount of money this is worth. 
Um, so somebody just said they were gonna start switching water changes. My recommendation is to start pushing your water changes slowly. If you do week, go every two weeks, but check your parameters and then three weeks and then go to where it is you're gonna go. Um, Christ, I was born in 76, young whippersnapper. You make it like you're, you're, ten, you're not even 10 years older than me. It's probably uh, all my, my ectoplasm treatment. <laughs> but no, seriously, I'm having the time. I'm having the time of my life right now. I'm literally living my best life. There's some things that I wish I could, you know, I have three of them for, from the 80s. How much would you pay for that one? DJ, message me on Instagram, jwill07. Anybody got collectibles, hit your boy up. I'm ready. Um, no, I'm having fun. And the reason why I'm having fun is because I'm choosing to have fun. That's the idea when we do this. Um, whatever we do, whether we are keeping aquariums or we ride motorcycles or we collect uh, old school toys that bring us joy from our childhood or... We, we hike or we do photography, whatever it is, you have to choose to push out all the, the duties, the crap, the shiitakes. Um, can, let's see. I love how happy you are. <laughs> Thank you. Can a tank get to the point that it doesn't even need a water change? No. That's me. You can, you can watch a million people and be like, well, if you do it like this, can you add this Anubias and this sword? And there are, there's a ton of information out there. And this is what I have to say about that information. You are taking what happens in the wild and you are condensing it to a glass box. Okay. Even a pond, even a pond evaporates, new water comes in, you top off the whole thing. So you're doing some sort of water change in some way, shape or form. There is, in my opinion, no filter, no, well, I guess outside there would be, but in a closed glass box, in my opinion, based on what I know, what I see, what I've tested, that there is nothing that is going to keep your aquarium, unless you just fully plant it and you don't put anything else in there, Maybe you can get away without doing a water change. But I recommend doing water changes ever so often because it does replenish minerals that aren't in there. It does regulate the pH if you're not doing that stuff. That's the reason why water changes, I believe, were there in the first place. People were overfeeding. They had no idea how to regulate pH. And so they did water change and it would level everything out. Doesn't mean you won't have issues. I had a pH issue in here. I don't have that anymore. I don't know what it was caused from. Carrie, no need to add money to the best life fund, but I greatly appreciate it. Uh, I truly do. So, um, there is, I used to, so disclosure, I don't fully own Northfin USA anymore, which is why I don't go crazy promoting it. I still use Northfin. That's all I use in terms of pelleted and flake food. Um, I've been testing out some Zoomed food, uh, live food for the turtle and the puffer, but, and I use reef nutrition for my saltwater tank. And what I found is, for me, I used to do this promotion of North and I had this cool logo. Technically it's kind of, it is still cool. But I created stickers again. Um, and I'm going to start doing like these cool t-shirt designs which revolve around retro stuff, potentially keeping fish. And um, you know, we'll do pre-sales and stuff. So I'm gonna get back into a lot of that excitement. And if you're at Aquashella, you will get a sticker. Uh, Jay, I suffer with mental health. I always have, but I'm moving to North Yorkshire for a new start, so I'm excited about that. Can I have a big shout out to Leeds Let's see, it went away because I'm on my phone. With Leeds, uh, United in UK, Pride of Yorkshire. So I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna tell you, Paul, it doesn't matter how, how intense life gets. Doesn't matter. 
Every day is a struggle if you choose to live inside that struggle. I too deal with mental illness. I go to the Veterans Affairs Hospital once a month. Matter of fact, that's it today. I, got to go the, I go on the 4th. And I've had my brain, my cranium's been checked, my cabeza has been reset, the whole thing. But I always ask myself two things. Am I going to die in this situation? And usually, 99.9% of the time, especially now, it is no, I'm not. And the next is, how am I going to process my emotions and move forward? What you are doing right now, making the change and moving to Yorkshire, is by far one of the hardest things anybody could ever do with mental illness. You are making a change in the right direction, a move forward for yourself. And I commend you. And I, I could only imagine that the folks right now would, would say congratulations or kudos or put an emoji for you, Paul, for making one of the hardest decisions and that is to pack up your things and move forward on to a new, better beginning because you're choosing it to be better. Paul, it's all about choice. We can choose to dwell on the negative or we can relish in the positive. And I believe that you want to relish in the positive. So I got a lot of these new videos out. We've got, um, these store tours are different. Somebody just said they really liked them and I'm grateful that you liked them. I'm going to these aquarium stores that I feel should be on camera. They're not going to be, you know, they're not always gonna be fantastic, but we're gonna talk about why this portion makes it fantastic. So the most recent one was in Jerseyville, Illinois. I, I've never been to Jerseyville. I felt like I, I crossed the Mississippi. It was, it was cool. It was really cool. So I'm doing these videos and instead of saying, oh, this store is clean, this store is dirty, they have a lot of good stuff or et cetera, et cetera. I'm choosing to use an acronym, the three P's, right? And it's product, people, process, and passion could fall into there. But the main thing is to look at the people and how does that store stack up and the process and how do they give you the information and what they do and then the product, what do they have? Fish, dry goods, the whole thing. We tie it all together into a video to keep it under 10 minutes and to show you just how awesome some of these stores are. So if you get an opportunity to check those out, it would be greatly appreciated. There is a playlist. Um, it's a lot of the newer videos. The last one I did was Midwest Tropical Fish in Jerseyville, Illinois. Thank you, Craigers. Craigers, I almost wore your shirt today, man, but it was in the dryer. Um, that means I've already worn it. So lots is happening. Lots, all in one, all in one go. And like I can choose to be freaked out about all of this. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten, right now, ten, no, excuse me, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten or eleven glass boxes. That I've got to move. I've got to figure out livestock. I've got to figure out what's next. I could be freaking out. But instead, I'm choosing to rely on the knowledge that I've gained. And I'm choosing to live in that strategy that I built. And that's all I can do. Like I can't do any more than what I'm physically capable of doing with these aquariums. I know where the Congos are going. I know where the Trophius are going. I know where the Saltwater Aquarium is going. I have all of the stuff for that. I know where Slash is going. He's gonna go into a holding tub until the new aquarium is built or until I get the Congos built into the Paludarium. Like, so I know the final process. The big step is putting it together without stressing and getting those fish those inhabitants in the glass boxes to their destination with the least amount of stress. I'm not gonna be pulling them out a million times. If I could do that, it'll be successful. No matter how many hiccups happen in the middle. I'm not gonna be doing a video on it because I've done videos on how to move aquariums, but I'm gonna be doing a video on the move 
I'm gonna be doing a video on setting up the new fish room and its ongoing process. And I can tell you that there is going to be a phenomenal piece inside this aquarium room that is gonna be unlike anything anybody's ever done. Two actually. And I'm very excited to share it with you. I'm very excited to show you and I'm very thankful to those who have stepped up to help. Um, so it's, I'm giddy. I'm like a, <laughs> I'm very excited. And uh, I can't wait. I can't wait to show you. I can't wait for you to see all of this just really cool stuff. There's also some like, I'll be Easter egging myself in other people's videos here in the next month. So if you watch anybody else, check that out. Um, but somebody just asked if I still use ChemiPure. I do, I still use ChemiPure, I've used Max out, uh, but ChemiPure Blue just seems to be the best uh, for it. It's just, I love it. Um, somebody just said they're, they're, they're happy that I'm happy. I'm excited to see this, yay. Well, I am excited to show you. So J-Rock does stuff. I have a daughter who struggles with mental health. I subbed and hit the bell. Just based on your response to Paul, I'd be glad to join a fish room stream that has compassion for others. Thanks. I mean, look, I have probably been to the darkest of depths, whether it was through mental health, whether it was growing up, whether it was being in the military in places that most people wouldn't send their worst enemy to. Well, I guess that's, not the case, but I came back from it. I persevered from it. I rose above it. And I get emotional talking about it. But what I found is everybody has an outlet, right? Mine happened to turn into aquariums through a doctor and YouTube. And then the way my mind works is I have to find a purpose for what I'm doing. I've always wanted to be a motivational speaker. I've always wanted to be a voice actor, but I can't do all those things. But I can choose to implement those things into what I'm doing and I can tell you in the last 10 years, the amount of people that have reached out to me that said that I've helped them in some way, shape or form has been mind blowing. It's, it's, it's essentially impacted me to carry on when, it, when at, at times it, it sometimes wasn't worth the time. But when people say that some things aren't worth time, it's true. But, but I had to remember that there was people behind the time. And maybe I, I worked three hours on a video that didn't do very well, but one person, one person saw it and that one person came out of a place they didn't wanna be in or their family member or got them through a situation that they never anticipated being in. That four hours then became worth it. And I kept seeing time and time again that it was worth it that I would change my schedule and figure things out just to get a video out because I felt that if one person saw it and it helped one person, they got through all the fish stuff and at the end, there was something that grabbed them, something that impacted them positively or maybe it shook them to the point where they had to step forward or they had to stand in a mirror and say, the time is now to wake up. It's true. My mom and dad, alcoholics and drug addicts, blue collar workers, never making more than $50,000 a year combined. If that. They divorced when I was 11. My mom and dad still alcoholics and drug addicts. My dad comes to live with me while I joined the military at 17 after doing everything I could to be the best athlete I could. I just felt that I had to remove myself from that situation. My mom still doing drugs. 
My dad decides to come live with me, dies at 55 in a bedroom that I gave him because his heart failed over all of the stuff he put himself through. My mom still off and on doing drugs, binging, coming back, me deploying, trying to focus in on what's right. And then my brother happens. What do I do? I keep moving forward, right? Because if I dwell in the negativity or the sadness, that's only, that's the only place I'm going to stay. It's like sitting at a red light. If it goes green, you have the choice to stay or go. But why do we go? Because it said green, we have to go, right? But you don't have to go. You choose to go. So as things keep transpiring, I go through so much. I get withdrawals, mental, depression, anxiety, concussions, headaches. I didn't like this job. I didn't like this. I kept living in this, this ball of something has got to change, but it never was me. It was always everything else around me had to change. And I jumped and I jumped and I jumped and I was never happy. And then I started a business. I had my son, the business decided not to go where I thought it was going to go because I was so focused in on another part and not the business part. I was not happy in what I was doing. My relationship was not very good and I felt like I was carrying the burden of everything. So I made choices. I took a new job March of 2020. COVID happened. <laughs> I didn't get to do that job. I adapted. I improvised, I adapted, and I overcame. I decided to change what I was doing as a human in my life and make decisions that would probably rub people the wrong way, but it didn't matter because it was me. It was my life, it was what I was living in, and I wanted to be the best human being for other human beings. I wanted to be the best father I could be, and I couldn't be the best husband I was at the time because I didn't feel like it was that style of relationship. So I chose to extract myself from parts of that life. To become a full-on better father, a full-on better human being, and a full-on better part of a brand that I fully stand behind and I am every day grateful that they took a chance on me and that is CJ. And now I'm in a relationship where it is 100, 100 together moving forward. When there's lows on that end, I pick up. When there's lows on my end, she picks up. I don't feel like I'm carrying the weight of everything. So in life, we have choices. It doesn't matter what is happening around us, we have the choice to allow it to affect us or we have the choice to allow it to come in we can sift through what we need, get rid of what we don't, and move forward. And if you've got friends that are just there leeching and they are not helping you move forward, they are not encouraging you to move forward, then you need to ditch those so-called friends and get friends that are there with you for the ride, for the long haul, and for when it's dark and when it's extremely bright. And please do me a favor. When you reach where it is you were trying to go, do me one favor if it is ever one thing that you do when you reach the pinnacle of what it is that you are doing, you have to. It is only built into human code. You can choose not to, but that is not human code. That is your choice and it is a dirty choice. You can turn around and help the person behind you. I didn't say do it all for them. I didn't say hand them money. I said help them. There's a lot of ways we can help each other. And it's not by just money or gifts or things. It could be by words. It could be by a smile. It could be by holding a door open for somebody, pumping their gas. When I joined the Navy, I had dreamed that I would be in a position where I can do, see, and go anywhere and anything that I wanted to when I wanted to. I was 17. It hasn't happened yet. But what I can tell you is that I'm months away from it happening. Like my goal was to be in a place in life 
where I can bust my ass and not worry about literally trolls and people antagonizing you and maybe laughing at you. It doesn't matter. Because all of the hard work, the sweat, the tears, the blood that you put in to what it is you're trying to do, no one else can stop you. No one. By the end of this year, I will be in that place. I will have hit that goal. And you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna celebrate. One time. And then I'm gonna change my goal. Folks, you got a choice. You can live in shit. Or you can get up, clean yourself off, and move forward. I'm here. I can help you. There are countless other people that can help you. It's, I could put, I've got diagnosed PTSD. I've had knee surgery. I have my guts taken out. I've had people wanting to operate on my brain. I can do anything. I can label anything. But what I am is motivated, dedicated. Only easy day was yesterday. I will improvise, I will adapt, I will overcome, and I will take on any goal that I put in front of me with everything I got. Because if I don't, then it wasn't worth it. Folks, I really hope you got whatever it is you were looking for today. Whether it was seeing all of my aquariums for the last time or listening to me ramble about what we should do as human beings. I'm truly passionate about those who live on this earth with us, whether they're mammals or co they're cold-blooded, warm-blooded, it doesn't matter. I care. I really do. And I hope each and every one of you succeeds this week. But the only way you can succeed is you can't blame everything else around you. you. Can't dwell on everything that's happening around you negatively. What you have to do is take care of yourself and your loved ones around you and make the change you need to make. Mr. News just asked, how do I feel about a fishless tank cycle? And what I can tell you is, if you're using a product like Stability, if you're using a product like Cold Turbo Start, if you're using a product like Dr. Tim's, you can easily cycle a freshwater aquarium in one day or a saltwater aquarium in three days. And the reason why I can tell you that is I've done it multiple times. And the other reason is, well, you spend more money on a 20 ounce soda because well, what? It's more convenient for you to carry around than a two liter bottle of soda. So stop living in 1975 and waiting four to six weeks, possibly other amounts of time to cycle an aquarium when you can do it today. Act now, start your aquarium. It's because you deserve it. Now, on the real, I appreciate you watching. Thank you for seeing the last run of all my aquariums. Stay tuned to a lot of Easter eggs, a lot of amazing stuff, some really innovative ways to keep fish with some animals, vivariums, paludariums, saltwater builds, cichlids, not because I want you to see them, it's because I wanna do them. I hope everything is exactly the way you want it. And if it is not, well, then that's your fault. And I hope you change it. You know what's next. Ladybugs. Holla!